The rumbling is upon us, my friends. Why I Want is continuing once again with yet another video talking about a 2023 NHL draft eligible prospect. Now, I get it. We did kind of move things around a little bit. This normally comes out at 10 a.m. PST, but because of the playoff predictions video that takes precedence over pretty much everything else in the hockey world, we are moving Why I Want to about 3 p.m. for today, which is not going to be a permanent change. It's going to go back to scheduled programming next week. But either way, we are sticking around in the WHL and talking about a guy that arguably, aside from Connor Bedard, may be one of the best finishers in this draft. However, he is a lot more of a polarizing pick in comparison to some of the guys that we had talked about before. Whereas the Zach Bensons, the Will Smiths, the Carlsons, Fantillies, and the Mishkovs are all going to be bona fide top 10 guys, this is the first player we're talking about this year that may not be in that range. Let's go over to the Moose Jaw Warriors and talk about one of the guys that has been the heart and soul of the Survey Corps, Braden Yeager. Now, when it comes to Jaeger and his name, you've probably heard his name a lot, especially if you've been keeping up to date with draft-related conversations that were happening as far back as a year or two ago. This is because Braden Jaeger is actually playing in technically his third WHL year. He had played prior years and he was really good, so his name was always kind of thrown around there as one of the top 2023 guys. He's 18 years old, born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, so he is a Sasky boy, 6 feet 165 as a right-handed center. Last year, as a 16-17 year old, he put up 59 points in 63 games played and 34 goals as well. That 34 goals really stands out because it's kind of the defining part of Jaeger in his game. Because he was such a good finisher in last year's worth of play, you saw a lot of people tossing his name out there as a top 5, top 6 pick in this draft class at the start of the season. You talked about the Bedards, you talked about the Mishkovs, the Fantillies, and Jaeger was also in that conversation too. However, the year has gone on, the regular season has concluded, and Braden Yeager is no longer a consensus top five guy. In fact, his scouting report is varied all over the place depending on who you ask. Elite Prospects consolidated rankings, so the average of all the scouting outlets' projections for this guy is 10th overall. But Elite Prospects themselves has him as low as number 20. You can see Dauber has him at number 14, Smot Scouting has him at 23, McKean's at 13, Craig Button has him at number 12. However, there are some outlets that are still pretty high on him. Future Considerations has him at number 7. You've got Bob McKenzie who has him at 7 too. Sportsnet has him at 8, Recruit Scouting has him at 7, and Draft Prospects Hockey has him at 8 as well. So long story short, some are really high on him, others are a little bit lower. Well, what exactly goes into that and why is he ranked the way he is? Let's talk about his production from this season. In 67 games played, Braden Yeager had himself 28 goals and 50 assists for 78 total points. So interesting to note, his point production did increase by a bit, but his goal production actually did decrease. Now, that doesn't take away from the caliber of the shot that he possesses and his shooting talent, it's just interesting to note that he was more productive last year in terms of the goals. Also is interesting to note though, he doubled his assists from last year in this season's worth of play. So, while the goal scoring took a bit of a backseat, he did increase that playmaking side. Now, when it comes to how Braden Yeager is able to play, he was known last year primarily as one of the best potential finishers in the draft class. His goal scoring was immaculate. He had such a crazy good wrist shot that he could get off in a variety of ways. When he's skating in stride, when he's galloping on the ice, when he loads up on his inside leg and fires it, pops it up into the corner, he's able to find the back of the net seamlessly. And that goal scoring touch was pretty much what defined him as a prospect heading into this season's worth of play. However, as we had said, the goal scoring took a bit of a back seat this season. Let's go over to some scouting reports and talk about what it is that they have to say about Jaeger. MyNHLDraft.com has the Tony Ferrari report from earlier in December. Jaeger is a high-level finisher who has an unreal release, blistering shots by netminders with ease. When he gets going, he can pick up speed and is a very dangerous player off the rush. Sam Constantino says that Brandon Yeager has been remarkably consistent in his production, continues to improve in the faceoff circle, and score big goals at key times. Now, that's interesting because if you go over to the April edition of Sam Constantino's scouting reports over here on Sportsnet, 
it does say a little bit differently about Braden Yeager. As we said, the report that we had just read was from December. This is what it says right now. The scouting world appreciates his ability to balance his game, but a small dip in goal production does have some people concerned. Again, that's not a scouting report. It doesn't go out there and tell you anything about the player, but it kind of contextualizes how his season has gone thus far. Ben Jordan from Smot Scouting says that Braden Yeager, seemingly one of the more polarizing names thus far, brings with him a straight line, puck dominant style of play that for myself is hard to overlook. Yeager gets around the ice in all areas very well thanks to his elite ability to see plays unfolding. And that's a really good part of his game that seldom people like to talk about when it comes to what makes him so effective. Yes, when he has the puck in stride and he gallops down the wing, he can snipe it with ease, but when he doesn't have the puck, this is where he slips and slides and finds his way into the right areas at the right time to make it so that he has the best opportunity possible to get a shot off if he gets the pass. He's got really good awareness of how to just read the offensive zone and slip into those areas that allow him to get the best scoring chance possible, and he's done that pretty consistently the past little while. When it comes to what's holding him back, though, this is where things get a little bit interesting. To help us out, we're going over onto thehockeywriters.com because Devin Little wrote a pretty good scouting report on Jaeger regarding what it is that he's capable of doing. What people don't necessarily agree on is just how good of a prospect he is and therefore how high in the order he should be picked. Part of that is due to the sheer number of quality prospects available in this year's class, and another part of it is his own play. When considering all the highs and lows of his game, it's hard to get a firm grasp on just how well he stacks up in comparison to some of his peers in this class. The report here says that Jaeger's shot and his willingness to use it is very good. He's got a quick release and hits his target with deadly accuracy. His shot does not rival the best goal scorers in the world, but it is dangerous enough that he could develop into a 30 goal scorer at the NHL at his peak. The under construction area of this article lists his high end potential, creativity, average skating, physicality, and debate as to whether or not he's a center or a winger as what needs to be worked on for Jaeger. And it's interesting because when it comes to high-end potential alongside of creativity, these are sort of the things that may be holding him back in terms of comparing him to other prospects. Ultimately, what a ranking is, is determining who goes where and the factors that indicate those decisions. And so for other prospects to be ranked ahead of Braden Jaeger, most of that would have to do with, okay, they like X qualities of this other player more. They think this player's playmaking or offensive awareness is more defined than Jaeger's, and therefore they're a better prospect. High-end potential is an interesting one to list because for Braden Jaeger, he's so much of a straight line, walk it in and snipe it type of guy that I could totally understand if there are some concerns as to whether or not the rest of his game and setting everybody up and how he plays off the puck would need a little bit of refining too. Now, as we had said, he did produce a lot more assists this season, which is great to see. It's just seeing the goal scoring take a bit of a dip as well is in and of itself a flag. I don't want to say it's a red flag because that makes it sound like it's a bad thing, but it is kind of a pinkish flag. Like, it's sort of there. And you have to acknowledge that it is there because he did not produce as many goals this year, which is what you're drafting him to be able to be. A goal scorer who flies down the wings and is able to pot it in. This is also why there's a debate as to whether or not you draft him as a center or a winger. Because as a center, he isn't the biggest guy in the world. He is only 160-something pounds. And so if you wanted to try to capitalize on his shot, just his shot, his shooting ability by itself, there's an argument to be made that he will excel more so on the wing. And that would void him of more responsibility defensively, which would allow him to be able to play his game more so when it comes to just dashing down and sniping it. So for Braden Yeager, he's a really interesting prospect overall. I'm going to end this video off by reading the final scouting reports here on this Hockey Writers article. The Athletic, Scott Wheeler from earlier this month, or last month, excuse me, says that for Braden Yeager, Wheeler likes the way he supports the puck defensively as a centerman too, though he'll need to get stronger to be reliable defensively at the NHL level. He is very intentional with his routes offensively and defensively, which should help him stick at the center position long term. I don't think he's going to become the kind of star you're hoping to get when you draft him in the 5-7 to seven range like some expected him to land this year, but he's got second line center, power play one upside if he can fill out his game, and continue to add dimension. And so, at the end of the day, if Braden Yeager becomes a 30-goal, let's say 30-assist type of guy, 
then all of a sudden, that's a pretty good player you're picking up somewhere in the first round. Is it top 5, top 10 worthy? Who really knows? But you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to where Jaeger ranks in your opinion, how well do you think he's going to play heading into the next few years of his career, and if your favorite team is drafting somewhere in this range, would you prefer to draft Jaeger? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shows 99. And bye.